Hi friends, welcome back for another math lesson with Miss Paglarani today. We're going to be working on measuring with a broken ruler. We'll start by talking about what is a broken ruler? What does that even mean? We'll do three practice problems together. You'll work on your independent practice problems and then it'll be time for your exit ticket. Whoops. We'll start with our pose the problem just like we would if we were doing a math lesson in class. So I want you to take a look at this ruler and ask yourself, what's the difference between this ruler and the rulers that we worked with yesterday? If you need to pause to take some think time, that's totally okay. If you said that this ruler doesn't have a zero at the beginning and it doesn't end in a 12, you're right. So Mrs. Bodwin wants us to help her measure the length of her pencil with this broken ruler. Now, lucky for us, we already have the tools to help her solve this problem. We'll come back to it in just a minute. So today's goal is to measure the length of an object to the nearest quarter or fourth of an inch using a broken ruler. So this is really similar to what we did yesterday. We're still going to be finding the length or the distance from the start of an object on a ruler to the end of an object on a ruler. The only difference is that we're not starting at zero on the ruler today. Does this seem familiar to you? It does to me. We used a similar skill when we were finding distance between fractions on a number line. So like when Jane traveled from the post office to her home and we had to figure out how far she traveled. We also used this skill when we were finding elapsed time on a number line. So when we were trying to figure out how much time had passed between 1235 and 445. So finding distance between two points on a number line is not brand new to us. Oops, there we go. So let's go back to our pose the problem. We can't forget about Mrs. Bodwin. She needs our help. I'm gonna take you into my drawing tool here. And I will move myself into the corner so that it's a little bit easier for you to see. So I've created some steps here to help us solve problems when we're measuring with a broken ruler. The first is checking to make sure we're starting at a whole inch. A whole inch. Hmm, what do I mean when I say that? Think in your brain. If you said any of these numbers that are labeled on the ruler, you're right. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Those are all whole inches because they're not fractional parts of inches. They're whole inches. All right. So I need to check to make sure my pencil starts at a whole inch. It looks like it lines up with three, and three is a whole inch, so that works. This is the easiest way to help us find the distance in between where our object starts and where it ends. So first I need to count the whole inches. All right, I am going to use my curve tool here to help me label and make some jumps. Let's count the whole inches. One, two, three, four, five. Hmm, can I jump that whole sixth inch? No, I can't because the pencil doesn't extend all the way to the nine. So I'll have to stop right there for now. Perfect. Let me turn my curve tool off here so that we don't keep drawing curvy lines. Okay. So now that I've counted the whole inches, one, two, three, four, five, I'm going to put that in my answer. I know that's going to be part of my answer. Now I have to count fractional parts by fourths. What does that mean? Fractional parts by fourths. Oh, that's like yesterday when we were talking about how we see each inch on the ruler is divided into four equal parts. So we have to count by our unit fraction, which is fourths. Let me turn my curve tool back on here so that we can do some more jumping. Okay, count by fourths with me. Oops, I moved my other tool, my other curves. Here we go. Let's try this. There we go. One fourth, two fourths, 
three fourths. Awesome. All right, so I found that the pencil extends three fourths of an inch further past eight. So I need to add that to my answer. Now I noticed that some of us have got a little bit confused on mixed numbers and that's totally okay. We haven't spent a lot of time practicing that when we were uh, in class together. So when you write a mixed number, that means that you're putting together a whole number, like the whole inches we talked about here on the number line, and a part of a number, which is what we call a fraction, right? So here's my five for my five whole inches that I jumped. And then I'm going to make the fraction three fourths. Now, it's kind of hard for the computer to recognize fractions as the numerator on top and the denominator on the bottom. So sometimes we have to type them sideways with the numerator on the left, so that would be three, and then a slash, which should be on the same button on your Chromebook or your computer as the question mark. So I'll put a slash. Then four, the denominator goes on the right side. So normally the three would go on top and the four would go on the bottom, but the computer has a little bit of trouble with that. So this is how we write it. I also make sure to put a space in between these numbers because if I don't, it looks like 53 fourths and that's a lot of fourths. We don't want that many fourths. So I make sure to put a space there and that way I know I have my whole number of inches that I've jumped and my fraction. All right, let's try one more. This problem says, is this pen four and one fourth inches, five and one fourth inches, or 13 and one fourth inches long? Okay, so again, I'm going to check to make sure I'm starting at a whole inch. Looks great. I'm lined up with nine, which is a whole number. I need to count the whole inches. In the interest of time, I'm not going to do the curve tool to show you the jumps. I'm just going to use my cursor to count the jumps. And I would love if you continue when you're working on yours, if you're doing it on um, a piece of paper and you're practicing to continue to label those jumps. That's important. Okay, so let's start by counting the whole inches. One, two, three, four. Hmm, can't go all the way to 14 because my pen doesn't extend all the way to 14. So one, two, three, and four whole inches. So I'll add that to my answer. Remember to put that space. And then I'll count my fractional parts. So I left off here. And then, oh, look at this. It's only one fourth of a jump. Not bad. I'll add one fourth by putting one in the numerator, slash, and then four in the denominator. Four and one fourth. I wrote my answer as a mixed number with a whole number and a fraction. I'm done, right? Oh, wait, I forgot to go back and double check to make sure I answered the question. Is this pen four and one fourth inches, five and one fourth inches, or 13 and one fourth inches long? Hmm, I have four and one fourth. That matches one of the answer choices, but I forgot to label with my unit inches. There we go. If I hadn't labeled that, somebody might have thought that my pen was four and one fourth miles long, and that would be a huge pen. All right, one more. This one's a little bit tricky, but I think that we can figure it out. Okay, let me move myself over here so that you can see a little bit easier. Okay, how long is the bar? Explain. For now, we're just going to find out how long the bar is because it, we're a little bit short on time for today's lesson. So we need to check to make sure we're starting at a whole inch. Wait a minute. Uh-oh. I'm not starting at a whole inch. I'm starting in between two whole inches. 
What do I do? Well, lucky for us, this blue bar ends at 15, which is a whole inch. Whew, thank goodness. Okay, so now what I can do is I can count the jumps backwards. Are you ready to count the whole inches with me? Here we go. One, two, oop, can't go all the way back to 12. It doesn't reach. So two whole inches. And then I stopped right here. I went one, two, and I need to count the fractional parts. I'm going to continue counting by fourths, just like we've been doing this whole time. One fourth, two fourths. Awesome. That's my fractional part of my mixed number. So two in the numerator slash four. Again, make sure you put that space, otherwise it's going to look like 22 fourths, and we don't want that. Hmm, I wonder if there's another way I could write this answer. I could also write two and what is two fourths equivalent to? Yeah, one half. It's halfway in between 12 and 13, that little line there. So I could say two and two fourths or two and one half. And I need to make sure that I label with inches. We are measuring in inches. All right, friends. Now that we've done our practice together, it is going to be time for your independent practice. So to get to your activity, you're going to first log into Google Classroom. It should look something like this. You'll click on Classwork. Then you'll scroll down to Math. You'll see once I post this, there will be an assignment for Tuesday. I'm going to use it yesterday's as an example. Then underneath that, you'll see your directions and you'll see that the independent practice problems are on the Google Docs. So on today's assignment, there will be one that has the same icon, looks just like this, and when you click it, it should bring you to a page that looks like this. So this is your independent practice. You're going to find the length of each object or line, and then you'll record them down here in the table at the bottom. And when you're done, you'll click turn in. On mine, there's no turn in button because I'm the teacher, but there will be a turn in button up here in the right corner. You can click that and we will know that you are ready for us to check your work. To get to the exit ticket, same thing. You're going to log into Google Classroom and you'll see that the exit ticket is the Google form. So it says forms right here. Then if you click that for today's assignment, it should bring you to a page that looks like this. So you'll type in your name, you'll answer the questions, and you'll click submit, and then it will give you the correct answers and any feedback that I have entered. A couple things to note, it's really important to only submit one exit ticket. If you submit it multiple times, we're only going to look at the first one that you submit. Also, if you submit the exit ticket and you see that it marked your answer wrong, don't panic. The way that the answer key software works on this program is a little bit funky. So for a multiple choice question, it will be able to tell you exactly whether your answer is correct or incorrect because you may have chosen A or B and the correct answer was C. But when you have these questions where you have to type in your answer, it might not recognize what you type in because of a spelling error or maybe you added a label. It uh, doesn't take into account that everybody uh, types in their answers in different formats. So if it marks it wrong on this type of problem where you have to type in the answer, don't panic, you may not have gotten it wrong. I had a couple of scholars who typed in a label with their answer, which was awesome. That's exactly what you're supposed to do. But the software didn't recognize the label and it thought that they got the question wrong. So don't panic. Please reach out if you have any questions and I am going to see you tomorrow. Bye friends.